We're on the sidelines of Tech Nation's Digital Conference 2022, and we have a very dynamic entrepreneur with us, uh, Umar Kamar Saab, who's the founder and CEO of uh, Export Leftovers, which is the largest Shopify store in Pakistan and which has caused a revolution in e-commerce in Pakistan. So Umar Kamar Saab, thank you very much for speaking to us. So how, the first question I want to ask you is, how does it feel to be such a successful entrepreneur? Uh, I feel very humbled that I have I'm contributing back to Pakistani e-commerce market and uh, being a catalyst in the industry and inspiring other people to join in and come in and and and, and start selling online. It's a it's a huge pleasure and I'm here to help people and it's an honor for me to serve Pakistan and help Pakistanis grow e-commerce. Okay, very nice. And now Export Leftovers has almost become a household name in Pakistan. But tell us the story uh, shortly. How did the Export Leftovers start? So back in 2013, uh, when I came back and joined my family business, uh, I went to the, to the factory and my father showed me that there were like a lot of uh, garments which were uh, sitting in our warehouse and they couldn't be shipped abroad because of different reasons. Uh, clashes with the customers, uh, with the with the foreign customers, or, uh, you know, delays in the shipments, or we made extra production pieces and we couldn't ship, a bro a big, you know, we were ordered uh, 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 for 10,000 pieces, we made 12,000 pieces. So those 2,000 pieces were sitting there in the warehouse. We, get, we, we had to get rid of that inventory. So that was the main purpose of uh, starting ELO, to get rid of the extra... Uh, garments sitting in the warehouse and get get some cash flow started. So that was the main purpose. Okay, very nice. And you're considered to be one of the pioneers of the e-commerce industry in Pakistan and you were one of uh, the first players. So did you have a first mover's advantage uh, in this industry in Pakistan? Um, certainly, because uh, back in 2013, uh, e-commerce was virgin territory in Pakistan. And, uh, you know, for, for, for us, most of our sales are done through uh, Facebook and Instagram. And back in 2013, if you posted something, the organic reach would be 200,000 easily. Mm. Uh, whereas now, if you want to get that kind of reach, you have to spend a lot of money on mm. Facebook and, and ads. So it was far easier times uh, compared to now. It was certainly I had first, first mover advantage. Mm. Okay, very nice. And did it help that you already uh, had a textile background? What if you didn't have a textile background? Would you still be doing something like export leftovers? Um, I haven't really thought about that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly having a textile background helped a lot in starting mm -hmm. this business because for me, uh, procuring that inventory, uh, because first of all, in the first couple of years, most of the inventory was sourced from my father's factory, so it was a, it was a no-brainer. For me, the supply chain was very easy, and I think it might have happened eventually because I come from Faisalabad which is like the mm. epicenter of the textile mm. industry in in mm. Pakistan so all of my friends all of the people who I went to school with had something to do with textiles so mm. perhaps it would have happened even if I was not in textiles okay very nice and what's the secret ingredient behind a successful e-commerce store so for me I always say that uh, if you want to start a business it has to solve a problem mm. if you're not solving a problem you have to think hard and your uh, uh, there should be problem solving in it problem solving problem solving involved so for us uh, I, I i feel that we have kind of clicked the uh, got the magic formula which is like we we give benefit to all the stakeholders involved in our business we help the factories get rid of their excess inventories we help them get their cash flow sorted we help the consumer get a very good quality product at a very affordable price and to do that transaction, we make a, we, we make some some money. So, solving the problem is very important in doing any business. It doesn't have to be e-commerce. Any business, you have to solve a problem. So that's that's what I feel is 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 recipe for a successful business. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And in the end, uh, uh, Umar Saab, uh, would you like to give any advice to young entrepreneurs who are trying to make it big but continue struggling in the face of so many obstacles? I think uh, first of all. You have to take a leap of faith and start something because a lot of people don't start and they're just always thinking and they have anxiety issues. Oh, you know, if this happens, what are we going to do? Or what are we going to do about tax issues? What are we going to do about other stuff? You know, courier charges and returns and all that. You start something and you'll figure it out. And I feel a lot of people fail because they don't start. And the other 
suggestion I would like to give people is that they should make small goals. They should make mm -hmm. weekly goals, monthly goals, quarterly goals, annual goals. Because if somebody is going to say that, uh, you know, my goal is to make one crore sales in a in a year, it's not going to happen. You have to make 10,000 rupees per day and then go towards a bigger target. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to fail with one crore sales in a year and you don't achieve it, you achieve like two lakh you're going to feel like a failure. Mm. So I think having realistic targets is very important. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you very much for speaking to us, Umar. Thank you. Thank you.